Shy, Shy vs. A Bike Podcast, man. Episode 72. We got the homie, Cameron Tyler, man. How you yes, doing? Yes, sir, man. I'm doing pretty good. I appreciate y'all having me in here, man. For it's sure. It's a big blessing to have me in from Flint, man. That's for sure. Dope. For sure, man. Hey, I'm, hey, I appreciate you coming, man. Like I said off camera, man. There's niggas who stay around the corner who be an hour late. So you being a little bit, it don't mean nothing, though. You coming from Flint last minute. We just talked about this yesterday. So, hey, I appreciate you coming through. Thank you, man. For sure. For yeah, sure. Man. Hey, man, we start every show, man. We don't jump right into the music. We do this thing called Salute Me While I'm Here. So basically, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times we wait for people to pass away, you know what I'm saying, to tell them how dope he or she is, instead of, you know, doing it while they can still, you know, receive their flowers. But the only thing is, you don't go with the regular, you know what I'm saying, if you're in a relationship, mom, dad, brother, and sister, kind of, you know what I'm saying, get outside that box. So you got anybody in mind that you want to salute? Anybody in mind I want to salute? Yeah, it's not okay. part of that circle. But it's kind of out of that immediate box. Yeah, yeah, because okay. it's always easy to say mom, and you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, okay. it's easy to do that, but... It'd be hard for motherfuckers to find somebody who ain't. It's, you know? it's, it's hard to name one person because I'm from a city of people where there's a bunch of people in my life right now that's going crazy. Yeah, as yeah. Far as, as far as just advancing themselves and that deserve their flowers. Okay. My my man Joker, who in the room right now, deserve his flowers. Okay. Man. That okay. man that that man been working hella hard. Yeah. Uh, to try to make all this stuff work. You know what I'm saying? For, sure. for those who don't know, man, that's my manager, man. He been working hella hard to make this stuff work. Yeah. And to help us elevate. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He's every day he get up work as hard as he can and mm -hmm. push himself up so like he deserves his flowers on that stuff man he, sure. he for, for such a hard worker he is and he got a family and everything man oh, that yeah. man work hard man. hell so, yeah hell yeah how long uh, y'all been rocking uh well this is the thing man <laughs> This man been my boy since I don't remember when I met him. Type <laughs> yeah, shit. been a while. <laughs> like, hell yeah. like we was kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't remember like it literally been in my life my whole life and then wasn't on no music yeah, stuff type yeah, stuff. Just but, homies. This, but this just was just meant to be. Yeah. It, it wasn't even on no like he already knew this the kind of stuff he wanted to do. I already knew this the kind of stuff I wanted to do. Yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. just like on some man, let's just let's just do it like this. Yeah. So let me ask you this then real quick, dog. You know what I'm saying? A lot, of, a lot of people get into music or just anything in business with somebody who they grill with, they rock with, and stuff like that. And then, like money, kind of like separate the people with fame, separate the people. Like, what, what would y'all do that would make sure that that, is, that shit never happened? Like, what, keep it real, like talking or you I know mean, what I'm like, like we, I mean, we, I don't think we gotta like we we don't operate in a way that's like that we gotta hide nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying or. We got to move around or size. Like, we can be blunt with each other. We can keep it real with each other and just know yeah. out of trust at the end of the day, it is all love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if I, even if I'm mad one day, yeah. man, it's all love. Like everybody knows yeah. in the next tomorrow morning, <laughs> when the phone ring, it's going to get picked up and it's going to yeah. be all love. For sure. So it's just that at the end of the day, like in my mind, it's just about knowing that. Yeah. You just making sure that that ain't shook. The moment yeah. that that shook, the moment that you feel like there's a line that this person might could cross there, it ain't gonna be all love no more. It's like then yeah. it, yes, yes, it's, and, it's and they don't that like it's gonna be confrontation. It's gonna be you know saying little arguments here or disagreements here. But you ain't gotta say oh fuck that person. Y'all really you know what I'm saying that Titan shit like no, that's gonna be, come with it. Like yeah. even, even relationships with. You know what I'm saying? Husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. It's going to be that time that y'all going to get into it. you like, man, fuck you. You got to go, your, you know what I'm saying, your room. You go here. And then y'all come back and, you know what I'm saying, get that shit together. But I think it's just all about, you know what I'm saying, communication. You feel me? Yeah, and that's where the trust come in, too. Because, like I said, one of the things that I trust, I trust it. I trust that his intentions are pure in what's going on. For sure. I, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, that sure trust factor. If you don't trust that, then, yeah, you might be a little more. Yeah. You might, it might be easy to think, like, man, yeah. this nigga. Bullshit for real. Yeah, but at yeah. the end of the day, I know that he want this as bad as I want this. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, it, so y'all both home. It's cool. Here. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure, man. I'm a uh, like I said, I've been salute, man. We on episode seventy two, so there's a lot of salute. Sometimes you run out of people, though. <laughs> so I'm gonna just salute, man. Good music, bro. And the reason why I say that because yesterday, rest in peace, was Tupac's birthday. You know what I'm saying? My top three rappers of all time and stuff like that to this day. I listen to him all the time, so I'm just gonna salute people who still keeping, you know, what I'm saying good music alive and shit like that, dog. That's so, what's up. And like I said, Tupac, like my uh, my my uh, my my father-in-law had my uh, four-year-old just bumping Tupac all day yesterday, dog. Like we in the car, he like play Tupac. I'm like, damn. He on the iPad playing Do for Love, cause you know that was his cartoon video and shit. So yeah, shout out to uh, to uh, good music man. Rest in peace, Tupac. Happy birthday, Tupac, dog. But uh, man, talk about growing up, bro. How was it when you was a young? Cameron Tyler, like, how was it growing up, man? Who was in the household? You know what I'm saying? We already know you're from Flint, uh -huh. so talk about it. Well, you know what? So the thing is, 
music has been a part of my life, you know, since I was just at the earliest point. Yeah. And you know, I come from a, you know, my dad, you know, he had, yeah, he immigrated uh, to America from Jamaica, Jamaica when he was yeah. a little, when he was in his, you know, a little bit of younger adulthood, you know. So mm-hmm. when he came here, you know, what I'm saying obviously he met my American mom, mm-hmm. um, and I grew up, I started to grow up in a household that had them both, you know. Obviously, you know, over time, you know, it's pretty normal for, you know, unfortunately for black families in these impoverished environments to experience those separations. So for sure, for sure. you know, when I was young, they they split up and. You know, saying me and my mom rocked one way, and me and my dad rocked a different way. Yeah. You know, my dad was heavy on supporting my music. He wanted yeah. to see me rise. Yeah. He was putting me in the studio when I was eight. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying he was trying to get me on stage at ten. Was that when you was going by name Caution? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you know that? Cause I do my shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't no other show you gonna go on. Yeah, and ain't no, no other show. <laughs> I'm, this, no, I'm about to check the Instagram. I'm just like, God damn, I gotta find where you uh, Ain't no other yeah, way. Fine. I guarantee you, I, I'll give you a hundred dollars if you go on any show and they, and they do that shit. <laughs> I put that. <laughs> yeah, so huh, talk about it, dog. Like, yeah, so, man, so your, your dad put that fire in you. Yeah, so my, dad, so, my, so my dad was supporting me heavy, man. And I became, you know what I'm saying? So I started to pursue her seriously as a youngin'. So mm-hmm. I went by caution. I was a real, like a YouTube rapper. So I set up like the YouTube page and I was shooting my own videos, record myself, yeah. doing everything on my own. Like back in the YouTube days, what a YouTuber would oh, yeah, do. You know sure. what I'm saying? Hell yeah, hell yeah. On a schedule too. So yeah. in my mind, like the schedule tight. Like I got to get a video out today. Yeah. Mama, stop. Mama, I got to get the video. <laughs> yeah. I do the homework later. The video got to come out. So like that in my mind, that was the mindset. Yeah. So I worked hard as a kid on music and I that was my whole life. Yeah. I wasn't really in much else. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And in school, I was just doing music related stuff. Yeah. Damn, choir and, sh- and shit like that. And yeah, yeah. I, yeah, we still know. got a telephone landline, man. Granddad upstairs. Oh, okay, okay. It's all <laughs> good. Go, go ahead, go ahead. But yeah, it was just I was just you know uh, just doing my best to pursue what I loved. You know, as yeah. I as I got a little bit older, you know, life got a little bit more real because you're an adult, so you got to yeah, deal sure. with adults, you know, related things and stuff. So yeah, 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 you know, yeah. college came around, I kind of stopped pursuing music because I felt like you know I was hitting a wall and. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I just needed to focus on other stuff So yeah. I started doing other things You know Shooting videos And stuff like yeah. that And then You know At the end of the day at, at Finally at the At the peak of trying to find myself mm-hmm. I was like Yeah This music is probably Gonna have to be the way And right, then okay. I started Going all in on that Well let me ask you this dog Get back Cause you was you know Young Caution in this mud dog So yeah, when you man. had When you had performed With Gorilla Zoe and John dog Man when, <laughs> You feel like you <laughs> Wow! <laughs> in 2014, did you feel like you were about to be like, damn, I'm about to blow up because I'm, you know, what I'm saying that's the nigga who was. That's exactly how I felt. That's exactly <laughs> how I felt because I was, I had a damn. That nigga want to call back. <laughs> <laughs> he get too heavy, dog. It's it's crazy because I had like at the time, especially during the Gorilla Zoe event, I had like a deal and stuff with yeah. with a company and. You know what I'm saying? My, I put all my faith in the company that I was working with at the time. I put all my faith in it. So yeah. I really did believe that I was there. Like, yeah, for sure. I'm about to pop right now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Watch. No, but I was, I was, I was wrong. You know, yeah. but, I, but I was, but I was only wrong because I wasn't moving the way I should have been moving. Yeah. I wasn't moving. You know, with with the kind of business mind that I should have had, mm-hmm. and I wasn't moving with the kind of grind in relation to my talent that I should have had. Yeah. So. But you was like, you was hella young then, though, right? Like, how yeah, old was you when yeah. this was going on? Was like 15, 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you. So how you how that? So your, your um the people you was messing with, they the one who set that up as far as like that that concert and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was that was that was their event, and um, they hit me up and told me I could be a part of it. But you know, um, in my mind, it was just uh. In my mind, that was why I had so much faith. It yeah. was because of the the little performance opportunities and yeah. opportunities that they were able to present me. You know, what for I'm sure. Saying? Yeah, I knew I was gonna throw you off with that with the whole name and stuff like that, bro. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, all good. Yeah, it's yeah, all good. Not a lot of people peep that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They got you got to go back to peep that. No, you can do, man. When you when you, hey, man, hey, that's why this is the best podcast, man, ever, man. And and I, and, I, and, 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 I, and I just gotta say, I feel like I feel like me being here was somewhat a little a little last minute. So yeah. that's it's crazy. Hey, you know hey, man, you know you know how it is. Is, man, so man, what about siblings? Man, you got brothers and sisters. Like, how was you growing up with? You know, saying yeah, you my, you? yeah, my family dynamic is crazy. I got um, so I got like I got six brothers. Okay, um, only one of them 
is from my mom's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the rest of them are from my dad's side. Okay. And, uh, you know, I don't have any brothers that have both the same mom and dad, but we've always just, you know, yeah, we've yeah. been in a house together, grew up together. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. wasn't even like that. We all brothers. That's what I say. We don't, yeah, I got a brother from my dad's side. We don't, hey, ain't no half brothers. That's you, my brother. Yeah, exactly. You know my brother. So, uh, a lot of my brothers immigrated from Jamaica mm-hmm. in their teenage years and stuff. So, they kind of came here and. You know, Sam was kind of going through a grind, and some of my brothers were a little older, but we still kind of had a bond because, you know, I'm younger and trying to figure stuff out. And yeah. They came here and they're just trying to figure out the culture. So we sure. was right, right. trying to help each other <laughs> yeah, figure yeah. everything out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Do you ever go back and like visit like the crib in Jamaica? Like, y'all you ever know, go back? Yeah, you know, I've been, I've been, last time I was in Jamaica, uh, I was 11 years old, so mm. it was quite some time ago. Yeah. Um, but I plan on going back very soon because my family has a family reunion out there okay. or a gathering there, you know, on on a yearly basis. Yeah. So uh, I've always wanted to be a part of that. So it's just about making sure the timing is right. When I was there at 11 years old, though, I, it was a culture shock for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I want to go back now that I'm older so I can really appreciate the culture in a different way. For sure, man. All right, tell me this, man. A lot of times we get our musical influences from our parents and stuff, man. We like... Well, our parents like just because that's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So, who were some artists or like you know, saying genres of music you were just vibing out to just based off what your mom was listening to and what your pops was listening to? 75% of what I listened to was like all reggae, okay, 75% of it, and it was like and it was old school reggae too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just it was real. Like my dad, my dad had this Yukon truck that had like the flip. <laughs> I, I know you remember. My dad had the Yukon truck that had the flip screen that came off the top. <laughs> so he would play reggae DVDs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All every car ride, no matter where we how went. Far, so how short? No matter what, whether it was McDonald's school to Detroit to Ohio, wherever we was going. <laughs> so I knew all those DVDs at the back of my hand. Yeah. So. I would just sit in the back with the remote, <laughs> going through music videos, watching. So watching Jocker, Egyptian. I mean, like Egyptian when people didn't know in America who Egyptian was for real. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Or 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 Buju Bonton, or you know what I'm saying? Like just just all of the classics. I was just back there rocking to yeah. every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's funny though. He said he had the remote that motherfucker. Like, for real, <laughs> man. What about your mom's? What she was uh. How she was as far as like music, what was she listening to? You know, so that's the thing. My mom, my mom, never really was big on that kind of stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and to be honest, it's understandable because my mom, my my mom had a different kind of. I feel like a lot of moms have a different kind of weight in life. You know, yeah. they got all these boys and oh, stuff yeah, like sure. that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So she wasn't able to really prioritize that kind of stuff. So as a kid, I didn't really get to witness her being her most comfortable time and listening to music or not. Yeah. I knew that she listened to a lot of old school okay. like R and B and hip hop on yeah. the female side. She listened to T L C stuff like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, for sure, like man. That. And she was sticking on that type of on that type of topic, man. We always do this, man, what's a song or album, bro, that you listen to and always take you back to the exact moment in your life? Like you could just remember J. Cole K O D. That's not even that long ago. Bro. Yeah, it was it. But what was that time? What was going? What was going well, on? Well, like this is the thing. Um, in that time of my life, I felt like I was really going through a lot as far as you know my own mental health and you know mm-hmm. the relationships that I was having with people. That was probably one of the darkest times that I was going through for real. Yeah. And at the time, I really was not pursuing music in any serious manner or anything yeah. i really was kind of lost in okay. what i was doing because you know i had bad situation with a girl bad situation in my living yeah. you know what i'm saying and i just I, nothing was right you know yeah. what i'm saying and i was smoking and i smoke heavy weed now too but yeah. i was smoking so much weed and and, and just and just doing nothing you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. for real so when when kod came out i felt like that album was kind of hold me accountable yeah for when sure. i heard that album you know what I'm saying? It, that I felt like he was really talking to me, like yeah, on, yeah. on multiple of these tracks. You know, yeah. talking about his mental health and using drugs to cope and all this yeah. stuff. I'm sitting here like, man, this man is telling me to get up and stop booing. Hell yeah, for real. You need He's that. telling me. He's yeah. telling me to get up. So, um, you know, so every time I hear that album, I go right back to that time, Bro, and yeah. I and I reflect, and I go, yeah. You know, I, and in fact, sometimes when I'm down now, I can listen to that album and reflect and be like, man, things are way better than yeah, they were yeah, at yeah. that time. Man. Yeah, yeah. man, it's funny cause I got something similar to that, dog. Like, Kendrick Lamar had um, a mistake. It was a title, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would listen to that, man. Like you said, it had bad breakup, man. Kiss my ass. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, man, I listened to that. I'm like, damn, I, I was the same way as you, dog. Like, I wasn't working at the time. 
Gotta move back with moms because we, you know what I'm saying, we got our own little spot. So, of course, I'm not about to stay there with you and we ain't together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you back there wearing out your mom couch and shit, dog, just sitting there every day. She go to work, you still in the same spot, ain't taking no showering days. <laughs> All because of a female. Damn, a female, fuck your life up, bro. <laughs> Damn. Shout I'm, out to one female here, dog. I, I made, no, shout out to my woman. I love her to death, yeah. but I understand I made that song. And she know, too, I made that song, I wish I was evil for that reason, man. Yeah. You, you can't you can't try to partner yeah. up with the wrong person. It won't hey, work speaking out, Speaking of weed, there's a classic pot here right here, my little bro and yeah. shit, bro. Oh, what's up, buddy? All right? Hell yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah. yeah, man, but that, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's like I like to ha ask that question, man, because when we had like little family gatherings, dog, we we were doing this thing, just passing the ox to each other and just uh, explaining a moment in our life off of a song or an album. So it's oh, always okay. funny because music, dog, uh, t can talk to you and, and can pay a picture as far as like what's going on in your life during that time, good or bad. You know what I'm saying? So it's always funny to hear somebody talk about what was going on, man. I'm glad J. Cole put the album out, get you out your motherfucking uh, yeah, man. Shout out to J. Cole, man. He 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 set on my top five. Every year since, because just just because of that, you yeah, know what I'm hell yeah. Well, give me a what what what's the first CD? You young, so I don't know if you like purchased a CD, dog. But yeah. <laughs> 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 give me a CD, your first CD that you remember, dog, that you stole or, or bought, because I didn't stole a lot of CDs in my day. I, yeah, I did, but I'm trying to remember too. If you, uh, God, it's, it's you close. Like, it's you, at the tip you like of my around tongue. that time, like the uh, when it's niggas close. was stealing music, though. Like I bought, I did buy a CD though. I did. <laughs> it was like one time though. It yeah. was, I bought one CD and then <laughs> it was back to download for sure. I'm trying to remember <laughs> what it was. Oh my God. Man. Okay, this is what I remember. All right, you talk to me. Okay. <laughs> I think it was a Jock Hero album. Okay. I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. But Jock, you, you, are y'all familiar with him? Let me hear. Give me hear. So, so Jock Hero is a reggae artist. Okay. Um, in in Jamaica, and, uh, and he's been and he's been he's an OG man. He's been around for so long. He still make music too. Yeah. Um, but he was making music, you know, obviously since I was the youngest of a child. Yeah. So, um, and he was one of the one of the artists that I would listen to regularly in my dad's back seat. Okay. That was why I would tell my dad, like, I want to get a Jock Hero CD. Yeah. I want to go get a Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. And back then, I wasn't downloading music. I'm a real kid. Yeah. Like, kid, kid. So yeah. I'm not downloading music. <laughs> so, <laughs> your kids nowadays, man, they download music at six. Man, for real, man. Like I say, I got to tell you, my son listening to Pac and shit. My son was about to be five. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, he's just going YouTube. Yeah. And me and my wife, like, how the fuck he type Tupac in? Like, <laughs> that was funny, man. So yeah, so you said like you you named a couple of things you list to off your pops and stuff like that. But once you became you know older and stuff and getting your own ear for music, who was the people besides J Cole that you was gravitating to as far as music, man? Um, when when I was a when I was a kid, yeah. um, I I probably was most indulged in the Cash Money era. Oh, dog, you talking in, good in the, in the Lil Wayne era? Like you talking real good? Like I was probably <laughs> mostly deep in that. But then but then you know. As I'm getting older, I was deeply fascinated with the Drake come up. The Drake yeah. come up was a fascinating come up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So like, I reflect back on how I watched it as a kid, even, and that was definitely uh, an, an influencing come up. And the last person I have the name is is y'all probably won't know this cat, but there's a dude. He, he from Toronto. Yeah. His name is Russell. Okay. He didn't even buy a few names. He was D Pride, yeah. then Pride, yeah. and then you know Russell. No, okay. but he he was a YouTube rapper. Yeah. He literally is why I was like I want to be a YouTube rapper you know what I'm saying and so he he's an Asian rapper out of Toronto he still make music I think bro was crazy hard you know yeah. what I'm saying he's crazy talented yeah. if you're listening bro like bro, <laughs> let, let's do the feature bro I'm trying for sure for sure but, hell yeah but he he was a big he, I'm, it's unfortunate that he's that you guys you know he's not big enough that everyone knows him but, um, but he was a big in, big influence in me making music in general oh, that's what's and up. as far yeah, as who I would listen to every day on the regular when I came home from yeah. school I'm and all check that it stuff out, dude. Hey, I'm gonna check it out for sure and Drake is funny man cause he he put me on Drake when he was on uh, Degrassi and shit on that TV show what yeah, yeah, that's what he, he put me on that. So he's like, yeah, that dude, he rap. He rap. Yeah, right. And the first song he let me listen to, though, was uh, him and Trey Songs. Because Drake supposed to have signed to Trey Songs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so he supposed yeah. to have signed to Trey Songs before he was with, uh, you know, saying Young Money, Cash Money. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, this motherfucker in a wheelchair rap. Like, you know, because he was in a wheelchair in a TV show and shit. So I'm like, because he got shot in the back from a, a white bully and shit, dog. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so uh, shout out to my son, mom, man. She was a big fan of Degrassi, so I was watching that jump with her, duh. So they had a shoot, bro. Yeah, so I was surprised, like when I'm like, damn, this nigga rap, like, and he was dope and shit, duh. Yeah, so, yeah, that's just funny, man. But um, 
You from Flint, dog? Yes, sir. Like, did you get any influences from any Flint rappers that we might not know about? Uh, oh my gosh, bro, the list is so freaking <laughs> long. Okay, look, let me <laughs> let me just say that about Flint. I think Flint is the like the most talent. Look, and I I'm from Flint, right? Yeah, so I get sure. I get it. People think I'm supposed to say, well, but I promise you, I'd have been other places. I know a lot of other people who'd have been a lot of places who come into Flint. Yeah, the reaction is always the same. Yeah, Flint. Probably has the most talented hip hop hub that I didn't see with sure. my own eyes before ever. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. as far as the scope of talent in the city of Flint is crazy. Yeah. So obviously shout out, shout out to the big dog. You know shout out to Y and J and them. You know what I'm saying who then popped out and you know what I'm saying they doing their thing and you know what I'm saying so it's big love to them. But um, on top of that, there's a lot of other people in the city who over time we're hoping that the eyes can kind of lean towards as a result. Of Y and J opening these doors yeah. and, and and people being able to look into the city, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I mean, shout out to YSR Grams out the gate. You know, he's one of the dudes that you know you might have seen him with Jay, mm -hmm. but if y'all not tapped in with YSR Grams, I think y'all should tap in. Shout out to Jeff Sky. Yeah. Jeff Sky is a whole different vibe yeah, in yeah, Flint. Yeah. So if y'all have not hip to Jeff Sky, check him out. Shout out to Ace Gabbana. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know who John Connor is. Oh yeah, um, yeah I know the, John But Connor. the XXL 2014 fresh with John Connor. Yeah. You know, he got the All Varsity Music label. He yeah. Flint right now, shout out to John Connor, man, big love to bro, he and Flint right now putting heavy work into creating an infrastructure in the city, I've been with working with John Connor heavy lately, mm -hmm. and the reason I brought him up, because he has an artist named Ace Gabbana, who I've done a few songs with, shout out to Ace Gabbana, he got an album coming, that's about to shake everything, yeah. if y'all haven't heard Ace Gabbana now, I promise you when the album come out, y'all yeah. will know who that bro, who for that sure, man sure. is, so when you ask me about yeah, other artists yeah, yeah. in Flint, it's so hard. Yeah, and you starting like even with Flint, Detroit, you starting to see like people outside kind of like mimicking the style and the motherfucking the beats and the 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 the, the, uh, the way they you know what I'm saying they structure their words and everything. And that's exactly why I'm excited for y'all to see what's going on in the city because this it this the style ain't necessarily that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying the style. That's the point. Like anybody who in the city or anyone who really is a fan of. Of the Flint music scene entirely, yeah. you kind of start to notice that the Flint music scene is a scene that plays with music as a whole. Yeah. It's a that's why I think about the Atlanta scene, for example, because one of the things with the Atlanta scene is that the the sound wasn't necessarily captured in this narrow mindset, mm -hmm. and in Flint, it's the same way. For like sure, the sound sure. is not narrow. Yeah. The sound is just yeah, pure yeah, yeah, music yeah, yeah. talent yeah. Yeah. there. So um, I I'll send you some info oh, even yeah, after the yeah, podcast. Yeah, I, I yeah. want you to see some of these guys, but for sure, for real, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah for sure. But like you said, you probably you probably saying like the ones they spotlight is the ones they think like okay, this is how everybody from this you know what I'm saying city sound or whatever like it's like Detroit. You, everybody think that you, Detroit got one sound, but it's more artists that sound different. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't the same, got the same beat, the same hell of a sounding beat, or got the same uh, uh, flow as like a dope boy or a team east side. Like it's more than just that in the, in the city. Yeah, it's, it's a lot going on, and, yeah. and, and that's and like I said, that's why that's what John Connor's mindset has kind of have been, you know, as a person who's been really trying to put everybody together to show like this is what is really going on yeah, here, including sure. people like you know saying Jay and Grams and them. This is what's really going on, and Crispy Life Kid, and this was really going on. Yeah. You know? Now talk about Flint, dog, because outside outside of Michigan, when you go to like different states and stuff, the only other city that people are comfortable saying they're from besides Detroit is Flint. <laughs> because like, <laughs> because if you from anywhere else you're gonna be like oh yeah i'm from detroit because everybody know detroit and like flint is one of them like we you know the two uh, cities in, in the state of michigan that everybody know about so of course like like i said if you're not from detroit you're gonna feel comfortable saying you're from flint so how is it in flint because we hear about a lot about flint just like detroit like it's fucked up it's bad like they try to paint that picture that both of these cities is just like high in crime and like it's dangerous to be there like talk about flint man on your on your on your, on your personal I mean, I, I mean, I love being from Flint. That's why, like, in my mind, every time I sit and I think <clears> about, <throat> man, where am I going to live at in the big picture? Yeah. I have a hard time not yeah. heavily thinking in my mind that I need to spend a good amount of time at home. Yeah. The thing about Flint is 
there's I mean look let's be honest and yeah there's 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 crime man there's crime in the D there's crime mm -hmm. in Flint there's crime it's you know what I'm saying there's issues between people that's mm -hmm. that's how it is when you know what I'm saying you don't rely on justice to solve shit for sure. you, I mean, yeah. excuse me but you don't rely on justice to solve stuff instead you oh, rely on you don't rely on justice to solve shit yeah. instead you rely on um uh, you know saying you you got to rely on street justice you yeah, can, you, don't, sure. you don't got a court system that's going to save you when mm -hmm. somebody Not take your livelihood so in any city where you have to handle justice yourself, that's what it looks like. Yeah. It looks like a heavy crime. Yeah. But outside of that, the city has a ridiculous amount of beauty to it because uh -huh. the city is the city is small. Yeah. The city got a population of eighty thousand people. Okay. But at the same time, we can still do like yeah. is like the kind of events that's there. I don't see anywhere else. Yeah. I don't see the kind of art anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I don't see the kind of grind anywhere else. Yeah. Like nobody in Flint. Everybody in Flint got to grind. People in Flint are grinding. Entrepreneurs yeah. because they because what else they got? So they I yeah, mean I'm got to. Yeah, everybody shoot, make it. Everybody shoot videos. They a photographer. Yeah, they got yeah. a podcast. They a rapper. For they sure. a model. They 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 got they make clothes. They do that. That's what yeah. that's what everybody in Flint is on because there ain't no jobs. So yeah. that's what I love about Flint because what's gonna happen is you're gonna see the results of it. Yeah, then motherfuckers gonna mm -hmm. come back. You know what I'm saying? Build up the community and stuff like that. Though. That's what it takes, bro. They built it on their own, though. You yeah. know I, mean? I just want to say that right here. The Flint residents are building it on their own. That's why I like being a part of it because everybody got a hustle mindset. It's hard, I feel like, to go places and build a yeah. team and build people who's really going to help you. That's why rappers are popping out the way they are, yeah. especially out of Flint. Because Flint, finally, I feel like, had the infrastructure to help people grow. Hell yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. I had to ask that, though, man, because like I said, motherfuckers be scared to say, yeah, I'm from... Uh, Fucking Inkster or whatever. They just got, no, no, they just really. got a lot. Like, man, you, where you from? Where you from? Detroit? What school you went to? Second on high? Like, man, you ain't from no goddamn Detroit. Second on far as hell. That's why, that's why they want to say they from cities like this. Yeah. Because a come up city. For sure, yeah. They don't want to say they from and everybody some affluent know, like, city. And for the most part, dog, when you go places and you say you from Flint, Detroit, you're going to get respected just off of that. Like, damn, for real? You you survived? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> your heart beat? Yeah. What's for up, real, dog. dog. So, yeah, I, I wanted to ask that question. Ask that question for sure, man. So, man, as far as you with the uh, with the music, man, like you said, you started at, uh, at a young age or whatever, dog, when you was young, caution. <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying, you, you you dropped it, picked it back up. Like, in between that time, you never, like, thought about music at all. Like, you ain't had, like, oh, I'm writing these verses here and there. Like, it just gone. No, it, it, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a process. Yeah. Like, so basically, I told you about that company I was working with. Yeah. So when I was 17, you know, you know, I got, I got, I got a call that basically said, you know, this is, this is, this, this ain't gonna be the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there was some, there were some issues between the company and another company, with you know contracts and whatnot. For sure. And it affected the artists. It made it so the artists couldn't really do anything mm -hmm. the way they wanted to, like they promised us, like the contract said. So you know, at the end of the day, that kind of fell out. And then when it fell out, you know, I became discouraged. Yeah. So. At that time, I was about to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. It was really like about time. I'm, I'm about to go to college. Yeah. I'm thinking about like, man, I love shooting videos. You know what I'm saying? I love, you know, politics and stuff yeah. like that. So in my mind, I'm like, man, it might be time to think about other things. For sure, it yeah. might be time to grow out this rapper thing. Yeah. That's that's that was my mindset. So it was it was a, like a cold turkey quit. Yeah. But over the years, that's how you know my love for music just has to be natural and real because mm -hmm. over the years I just had no choice yeah. I mean like there's times I'm in college you know what I'm saying I'm in my dorm I'm yeah. freestyling with, I'm freestyling with my roommate yeah. uh, getting getting to write a little bit just yeah. cause you know and then and now I'm a few years later I'm in the studio again just, yeah. but in my mind I'm like I'm just doing this as a hobby yeah just, just to be fun. fucking around yeah but then when it became like okay Cam it's time to really take care of yourself your mental health your livelihood everything Mm. That was part of it. Like, what do you really want to do? You yeah. know you love music. Stop, yeah. stop playing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. This, go do this. Do it for real. Hell yeah. yeah. So we yeah. doing get, it get back on it. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Now we already like. No, what's first time in the studio, man? Talk about how good, bad that was. Because a lot of times when you're in the bedroom rapping, <laughs> I remember. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it's different from going to the studio and get the the headphones, the beats and stuff. It's a whole lot different from just rapping in the, in the room. So how was it? Your first time in the studio, bro? My first time in the studio is my first time recording. Period. I just want to say, okay. I was I was eight years old, and my dad, in Flint there was this studio right next to a McDonald's. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like just it was just ran down yeah. type stuff. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Just, just just a studio somebody built. I didn't know who these people were for real, and I 
wish I remembered who they were yeah, so I can yeah, give them their props, love, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> so if y'all remember working with a little young cat who yeah. made a song called You Better Run, Homie, <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> that being said, we was, um, no, nah, my, my dad took me there, man. It's my first time really recording a song, so I'm eight. I'm excited. I got yeah. my, you know what I'm saying, my notebook. My, I got my stuff written. My dad is deeply excited. It's, yeah. it's like his dream. <laughs> yeah. So I'm my son in the studio. Man, that's what's up. So, you know, I record the song. I'm, I'm recording the song. You know, actually, I picked the beat out right there and then. Like, I wrote the words and picked the beat out after. So they mm -hmm. gave me a beat, to, you know what I'm saying, there. And then I get in the booth to start trying to record it. And then I record a hook. Yeah. I record like four bars of reverse. Yeah. Then I stop. And they was like, that's it? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they was, like, they was like, that's not a full verse, bro. Yeah. You need 16 bars. <laughs> I was like, what are bars? No, you sound like my dog Mojo, dog. <laughs> so, so this is why I appreciate them because they actually taught me what bars are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, my song first time, structure. my first studio session, I learned how to structure a song. Yeah. I learned how to what bars were and stuff. <laughs> I learned this stuff, and they, and they told me, and, and and they didn't even charge extra for it. They told me, look, go home, yeah, write it all the way out. Come back tomorrow, let's go again. Yeah, went home. I wrote it all the way out, went back, and made the whole song. Man, he had a 30 minute song in that, I mean, 30 second song in that boy. Like, yeah, I, I thought that's all I needed. I, I was like, ain't you gonna repeat it a bunch of times or something? Man. No, nah, that's not a rap song, bro. That's funny. So now, as you, you know what I'm saying, as an adult now, like, what's some things you gotta have in your studio session, man? Some people need, you know what I'm saying, drinks. Some people need smoke. Some people need food, water. Like, what's some must haves you, you gotta have, you know, when you're in your studio sessions? I need okay, so it's easy for me to like first I need some weed for sure. Yeah. That's easy. <laughs> easy no. Yeah. I gotta have some weed. It's gonna make shit way. Now harder. if you don't, what, what how how that, how that session gonna gonna go? I don't usually go without weed. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been in that situation. I don't know. <laughs> but uh but then, I never no, but, had that happen to me. Yeah, I never had that happen to me before. <laughs> perplexing. Man. But um but then the second thing is uh you know I I got to have, like, well, obviously, I got to have something to drink. Like, I got to have some, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, yeah. I, my drinks either got to be a, what is it? How is it? How you pronounce it? A YK of water. Okay. I need that. Yeah. A Fiji, a Smart Water, or a Calypso, or Everfresh. Okay. That's, that's your must-haves your must right there. Yeah. So, one of those drinks are appropriate to help me in the session. And then the last thing I need, the third thing, is I need Rick the Engineer. Yeah. Journey. Okay. He is he he has engineered literally every single one of my songs except one I think. Yeah. And so y'all got uh, that y'all got, got and, that relationship. And we've been man. locked in for two years now. Yeah. And if he not there, it's definitely much harder yeah. to make a song. Hell yeah, hell <laughs> so, yeah. Cause you got that that part you got that person that you can trust or whatever when you and that boy recording. And you need that man. Shout out to my dog P O G man. Cause a lot of motherfuckers are just if you don't build that relationship, they just gonna take your money, whatever, whatever. But if you got somebody who can you know what I'm saying Give you some feedback, y'all can bounce ideas off each other. I'm, I'm assuming that's how y'all are, right? Yeah, it's that. It is the comfort level. Yeah. It's just like he understands me and my music and all that. So like, when I get in the booth, you know, I'm a weird artist in the studio. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I, I said that though. Like, I mean, I get in the studio and, you know, I play with my voice. You know, I'm yeah. making noises and screaming. Yeah, your, your voice, is, your, your your rap voice is definitely different from your your regular voice. I mean, yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I can tell like you had some like you, you I could tell you got some. Jamaican influences in your music too when I'm listening to it. I hear that a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah. That wasn't on purpose. It was surprising <laughs> the first time I heard that. Though. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but but yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely playing and being loud and screaming and stuff. It's like other random engineers they gonna be like, man, this, like, what what is, this, this nigga right that? It's a wackest nigga ever recorded. <laughs> so avoid that situation. I stick with the man. I know. Yeah, he, no, you like like, like, like he got a tr like I need an engineer to trust me. Like yeah. bro, just trust me. Yeah, just trust just, what I'm doing. He right better like, oh, this camera be a camera back there screaming. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. exactly how it is now. Yeah, that's yeah. Cam. That's just Cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Cam. He get, he get himself he get himself right. It's going to be all good once he paint this picture right. Exactly. It's like when you yeah. cooking, you like, damn, you adding that? What's that going to do? Then you eat like, God damn, this shit good. Yeah, just wait. Right here. Yeah, just yeah. wait. Man, yeah. hell yeah, for sure, man. So, uh, February 10th, dog, you uh you dropped a project called uh, Let Me Speak. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? First off, what uh what made you choose that title and like how love been how how have you been getting love from this uh from this project? So um firstly I named it I named it Let Me Speak because uh the project is a collection of music 
that I created in 2020. And 2020 was really the first year that I started going heavy and consistent on my music. I spent the year before and stuff, and the time before, kind of playing with my sound, trying to develop mm. myself as an artist. In 2020, I dropped a heavy amount of music videos. I recorded a lot of music. Yeah. So when I came into 2021, 2021, I wanted to come in in a fresh way. I wanted to feel fresh when I came in. Oh, real I quick, had, you say you recorded a lot of videos in 2020. Did, uh the uh the the virus the covid kind of fucked things up for you if anything it made it better okay bad, bad. Uh, i mean and i'm for obviously covid was an unfortunate thing yeah, yeah, for but sure. in reference to my work ethic it 100 percent. oh yeah everybody said it too it was, was, it, was grind. it was improved because of covid you know okay yeah, okay um, but yeah so so because of because i made all this music and stuff i wanted to get it out you know mm -hmm. to start the year yeah. i wanted to come out of 2021 getting all the stuff from 2020 out the way starting fresh yeah. i didn't drop a project because i didn't feel like enough people were asking me for one at the time but you know in 2020 I, you know i'm from a, a city with a population of 80,000 people i feel like i was able to gather you know enough of a reputation in my city to say you know saying okay enough people are asking me for a project let's give them something to listen to for real yeah um so i put that collection together i took all this music that i made that wasn't out yet with a couple that was out and i then made a couple new songs mm -hmm. and i'm and i put them all together um, and I named it Let Me Speak because the whole goal of 2020 and the music in 2020 was to present my message, to introduce myself. Yeah. How you doing? I'm Cameron Tyler. You know, that's why I felt like I did in 2020. Sure. And that's why I named it Let Me Speak because the project, if you listen to the songs, I'm literally describing everything. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Who I am, where I came from, what I went through, yeah. and what it's going to be. Yeah. All of that's in the project. Yeah. Now, is this, is this your first official, like, project you put out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, under 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 Cameron Tyler. Yeah. Now you say uh you know you say eight thousand. You trying to you know gather those people to know you know who you are. Do you feel like the response from your from your city like has been has been good with this project? Absolutely, man. Firstly, is 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 shout out to my city. I I just got nothing but love and appreciation for the way that they have welcomed me onto the music scene because um I I didn't start with anything for real. I didn't yeah. start with like you know I feel like sometimes rappers start with a level of popularity from mm -hmm. other things and stuff you know what i'm saying i at least got 20 people that's gonna share, at least yeah, people yeah, share yeah. on my first song yeah. you know what i'm saying i didn't i didn't have none of that yeah i didn't have friends homies that i could call for real for real you know what i'm saying it was it was them too you yeah. know what i'm saying like i didn't have people for real for sure. so it's like the when i started putting out music everybody in the city that responded was fresh yeah there was no like I supported him for some other reason, so yeah. obviously I'm going to support the music. None of that. So every view, every follow, every subscriber, every everything yeah. was a fresh come up out of a city of, of a small amount of people. Sure. So I got big love for the city. I appreciate them because if anything, that shows me that it's working, that they, they're liking what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, it, it's just dope to feel welcome you yeah, know, in yeah. that environment. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, now you dropped it in February, dog. Was it ever a time you wanted to drop it earlier, but you like, dog, it's not ready? It got to be perfect. This ain't ready. I got to add this. Like, because a lot of times we have music and we hold it hostage because we be too worried about it not being good enough to, you know what I'm saying, let it out to the people. Did you have a time with this project like that? No, not at all. Okay. I, I I I wanted to drop it earlier, but the only reason I didn't drop it earlier was just was just technical background administrative stuff. That's the only reason. Yeah. Um, other than that, it would have been on earlier. That, that's I, if anything, I couldn't wait to get it out. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Now I listened to the tape, dog. Like I said before, I officially advised you over. I wanted to make sure it was dope. <laughs> so uh, you know, okay. what I'm saying because a lot of times I gotta go and listen, dog. So I do this this thing called top five. I give you my top five. And you give me yours and why? So my top five from the <laughs> album is uh is round two, uh, Alexander Hamilton, uh How Do I Die, Ten Toes, and In the Fire. Okay. So what's your what's, what's your five? My top five. Yeah. Oh uh, man. Number one, it's probably gonna have to be Alexander Hamilton. Okay. Number two. Oh gosh. Number two is probably gonna have to be. Um. Little baby. Yeah. Number three might be Gotta Understand. Okay. Which is the second song on the project. Yeah. Shout out to JBF Capo. Okay. And then number four, um, will be round two. And then number five. Um. Number five would be in the fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I, 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 think, those, I think that's right. What's the one that you like? Like this, my kid right here. This one song, like this, this define me. Like this is me. Like this is this. If, like, if, that's the problem because I, I, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of them. Motherfuckers. When I, because like this thing, the thing about that project is, you know, 
the only reason it's not an album it's not an album yeah. and the only reason it's not an album is because my album i just need it to be perfect in the way like that i want to express myself in the most current way For sure. and not to say that that pro don't get me wrong that project in my mind is amazing and that's the problem a lot of those songs you know are i a lot of heart you know go in to making music like that like alexander hamilton and stuff like that like i'm i'm talking about stuff i care about you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like when they, when I look back and I say, man, this song is my baby. This the one. Yeah. There's a couple of them that's like that. You know, Alexander Hamilton is one of them. Round two is one of them. Little baby is one of them. Like I love these songs, the dearly types. Yeah, you know for what sure. I'm like, hell yeah. Now this is one thing I do call talk about the bars, bro. Like I just try to like pick out little things, whatever, whatever. If I if I mess up the way you said it, dog, don't 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 hurt me, bro. It's all good. <laughs> so you got this one. You said I can't. Uh, what say? Can't believe the way I saw you. Fuck, I must have been blind. Didn't want to fade away. I saw you changing with time. Talk about that, dog. Cause with that, I see it like you know, what I'm saying it could, that can be relationship, that can be life. Like when you fuck with somebody, but you don't see that shit. You know, what I'm saying over this, time, you like, God damn, like this. There's people in my life, man, that was in my life that I thought would be in my life. You know, what I'm saying yeah, for, for sure. a long time. Yeah, and it's just, especially you know, I'm 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 young, I'm learning. You know, what I'm saying so. Mm -hmm. You know, being young and not really knowing the way that things can change when people's environments and situations change you know it, it can be a shocker yeah so for me there's people that was in my life that i thought that we was really gonna be rocking yeah, for yeah. a long time yeah and i kind of learned that when when it got hard when it got real mm. you know when the situation became bare you know that that they just didn't have it in them. Yeah. and they didn't you know, and like i said sometimes I, I talk about that before though sometimes they don't be a fault they just ain't built to you know, stick around your life like they ain't built for, for what you built for. All right, and I can't say it well. All right, I ain't gonna lie. Like, it, a lot of shit was hard. Like, yeah. and I could take responsibility for some of it being hard. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if we rock, you know what I'm saying? If, if you loyal to me and to to and I'm loyal to you and what we doing, then yeah. like we can work it out. We can figure sure. it out. But yeah. it, 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 it wasn't that kind of thing. That's why I tell this dude. I'm like, man, you got a lot of friends from your early childhood days like and it ain't too many people who can grow up with some with somebody or 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 a group of people and continue to be friends because life is going to separate y'all real shit going to separate y'all disagreements going to separate y'all so if you can feel if you can find somebody that you can grow up with and, and and friendship is key that's that's important in life dog if you can find somebody that you trust and you can grow up with dog that's amazing but a lot of times niggas just separate for whatever reason it is mm -hmm. so i told him like dog that shit crazy he had a little get together and he had like 30 friends in that mud, like, like, damn, you got a lot of friends, bro, like, my high school homies, I got, like, two of them, and then, like I said, real life started hitting, you get married, you had kids, like, job situations, or some, some people just shouldn't be in your life, my brother told me, like, the people you hang with is you, so if you see them not doing shit, then you probably ain't doing shit, and for me, that's really what it was for most, for most of these people, it just kind of taught me that, to be yeah, the people that you around are you. Yeah. And I'm surrounding myself with people that it, the morals ain't matching up. The yeah, ethics don't for match. Sure. Cause if you see them grinding, you like, hold on, I'm bullshitting. I gotta get either you gonna be a lazy motherfucker and say, fuck, I'm gonna keep being lazy, or you gonna get your shit together because you see like your people around you doing doing they yeah, doing their thing. I talked about that in round two, like you don't get up off your ass and do shit. Yeah. I try. Yeah. I try. Yeah. For sure. You know and also in round two, you said I don't wear Nike because they be texting my little brother. No, this is Jordan, but we can't be texting each other, one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, he's, I got the Pumas. You said it, yeah, before you said you write the Pumas almost every day. So talk about that, bro. Like, cause a lot of times, man, with with the, with the, with with the Jordan sh gym shoe, just 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 things in in general that 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 kids, you know, what I'm saying feel like they gotta have and shit like that. Then like with the Jordan shoe, has, they been getting killed over Jordans for shit forever. Like. And <coughs> And this is the thing. Look, I hate corporatism. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the weed. <laughs> you gotta yeah, say that. Yeah, you got to. Because they got all the shit that they cut, cut. They, they, know, they, might, they might get scared behind they behind their headphones. I'm good, y'all. <laughs> For sure. But um, no, man. It's the uh, I hate corporatism, man. It, it's really like it, it's it's in, in my. In my mind, is one of the number one problems in society as far as the way that the culture shifts and what we spend our money on and all that stuff. And I can't say that I'm not a 
product of what some of that is. Yeah. This stuff that I like, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah, for I, sure. I, you know what I'm saying? So I participate because we like it. But the reason we like it is is what they want. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Hell and, yeah. and when it comes to things like Jordans, you know, when I grew up, I grew up very non-materialistic. You yeah. know, I didn't ask for nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't asking my mama or my parents for nothing. I wasn't asking for like the nicest shoes or nothing like that. Like I didn't want none of that. And it was in school when people would rock it. I never cared. Yeah. I never wanted to rock it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I just it just never mattered to me for some reason. So as I got older, you know what I'm saying? It's like when I shoe shop now, like my whole my whole opinion on what a good shoe is and what a nice clothes is, it's different. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just get you know what I'm saying, I wear what I want, what I like and you know what I'm saying? And in my mind, there's there's no reason for me to participate. And you know what I'm saying that part of the shoe culture because yeah, yeah, it's just for sure. it, yeah it costs a lot it, Hell yeah, it, costs, a, it, it <laughs> costs it costs a hell of a lot and, Hell yeah and you know and and I and, and no and it is no diss to, to 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 Jordan or the company or nothing like that it's just that at the end of the day I don't I don't hold no value in it myself yeah, yeah so for sure. because I don't hold value in it you know what I'm saying I can't participate yeah. that's why I wear the Pumas like every day because I can get. I'm, I can get a, the exact pair that I want yeah. and like, and that will rock with almost everything I want. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For for less than you know what I'm saying, what this company is asking me for simply because the culture says it should you be got, that yeah, much. Yeah, that's what you gotta wear. Hell yeah! God damn, I remember, man, the gray elevens, man, almost got jumped over them boys. You know, that, yeah, <laughs> that's, but that's, it, man, that's crazy because that's artificial yeah. value. You Come know out saying? Eastland, bro. That's the, you know what I'm saying? Like diamonds are artificial value. Like there's so much stuff that's yeah. artificial in its value. But like we were talking about saying? before, you you guys had came came through the like a lot of times as a kid, man. You just seeing what you think is supposed to, you know, saying how you supposed to look, what you supposed to wear. What you supposed to be doing, like you know what I'm saying? Like we was even talking about, like we, we, we was talking about sex and stuff. Like when you you hear your friends talking about day, like oh, I gotta have it, like just cause that's what everybody talking about. Yeah, everybody, like that's you, the you fly gotta thing. Be able to say to you have some. Yeah, you know like oh shit, like, yeah, I hit Keisha. It's crazy. No, what, you didn't. Like <laughs> it's crazy how what other people do affects the culture. It's crazy how how it can affect your behavior and your choices. For and, sure. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's human nature. I feel like we all do feel like you lying if you say you don't. We all do it. But yeah. we just at least got to be mindful of, of how much power it's going to take over us. For because sure, for it's sure. not good at the end of the day to let it. Now, we kind of we kind of touched on this a little bit on the song, you, uh, how, how Do I Die? You was like, bitch, I'm really from a city. You you can find shine from where from the ugliest things. And we kind of touched on that as far as like being from a spot where from the outside, they like it's a fucked up, you know, it's an area, fucked up city. But you see a small thing because you in it. Like, just from the outside looking in from the, you know, saying the news, you might be like, oh, yeah, Detroit's fucked up. Flint's fucked up. But once you in it, you like, dog, that's some good shit over here. Like, y'all just ain't deep dived in there to see what's going on. So, that's what you were talking about as far as, like, writing that part? Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the city. Like, yeah. musically and in a lot of other ways. You know, I know the city. I just, I just know in my mind. I see a lot of legendary stuff in the city, man. It's yeah. going to be legendary. And that's like the best way I can describe it. For sure. For sure. Yeah, and then make sure that in the, as far as Detroit, man, we got to make sure we buy into our neighborhoods, man, because they're going to kick our ass out pretty soon. Because <laughs> you, you already see how they got downtown turning. And they, like, they just, they doing little by little, man. So, man, keep yeah, your eyes they, open. Yeah, they're trying to create the city in their image. But it's cool because, like I said, in the city of Flint, everybody work hard to create it in the image they want to. So For sure. Hell I think yeah. they're going to win that battle. Hell that's yeah. cool. Nah, you know, I, I I think I heard you talk about on your uh, you was on IG Live one time, or you was it was something, but you were talking about like working your everyday nine to five, but still pursuing your dreams. Like, how hard is that? Like working your nine to five, being in a relationship, and still having your music. You know what I'm saying? And having equal time for each. Well, fuck the job. You know, you just do your time there, but everything else you try to make sure you spend your equal time in each area. Like, how hard is that, bro? It's almost it's almost impossible. I firstly I I had to quit my job. Yeah, but, oh, she congrats, but, man. But you know, look, <laughs> she I appreciate pray. that. But, <laughs> but, it, but, and that's the point. I quit my job not because I felt like I was making enough money to quit my job. I quit my job because you know, what I'm saying I believe in what I'm doing so much that I was whacking, I was losing out on the time. Yeah. You know, the thing about this is the thing about this industry is, at a point, it get real. Mm -hmm. At a point in your mind, it gets so real that you can't afford to to bullshit. Yeah. So every day I was at work. I felt like, and like, this is the thing. If you got a nine to five and you support your career, that's dope. That's dope. For sure. But I promise you at a point, you might have to quit. Like, 
Pac Man, the only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that man, that so, hold, on, is it, we, hold on, we was talking about that somewhere. Is that, is that true, bro? Or he just selling that that he's still working? He say he's still working. Yeah, that's all I know. I forgot where I was at, but it was he like they were talking about that shit. Know. Like he was he a mailman and shit. Him, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's what he really do. Yeah, but, but, but yeah. if that's not, hey, if that's not what he do, he is so plugged. <laughs> yeah. you, he is so plugged with USPS. It don't make no sense. They just gave this man a truck, and mail, mail bags. Like, yeah, <laughs> man is, yeah, so, man. Yeah, so if, if he not, then he, then he damn near still do. Yeah, he's yeah. plugged as hell. But outside of <laughs> outside of that, no. So that's that's the point, man. In my mind, is it, for me, I had no choice but to quit because I couldn't balance it. Because yeah. I, every day that I was at work, I felt like I was wasting time. I felt like I was earning wealth for some other dude, mm -hmm, some other motherfucker, sure. and then yeah, I wasn't yeah. doing nothing for me yeah. except taking home a little maybe a hundred dollar check at the end of the day. Yeah. I didn't get it even. I didn't get it that day. Hell yeah. So, Let me ask you this though, like. Not to cut you off, you good. but it, uh, would you be quick to do that if you would have, if you like have uh, kids? Like, cause I, I mean, do, you, do, you don't have kids, do you? No. So if you had kids, would you been so quick to do it, or would you have kind of like wait a little bit for your for your career to like really blossom? It's it's a possibility, but at the end of the day, you, I think everybody gonna do what they have to do. For sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? If I don't if I don't got a job, then I'm gonna just do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Because you have to. Yeah. I mean, what you gonna do? Yeah, for you know sure. what I'm saying? Like, for real, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that. That's the mindset that I have now. And look, I don't. I don't have kids, so I can't. You know, I can't pretend that I know exactly what I do if, when sure. I, if I did. But at least I, all I know is that my mindset is I'm gonna do what I have to do. Yeah. But 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 this dream ain't getting shook. Hell yeah, for you know sure. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's yeah. that's the bottom line. And that and I felt like the job was starting to try to shake the dream a little bit. And yeah. I didn't want that. I was missing too much stuff. I'm missing studio time. I'm missing meeting people I need to meet. I'm missing networking. I'm missing video shoots. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't. Yeah, yeah. And I think I forgot who was on the show, dog. The uh, the cook chick, man, who made them good ass sandwiches, them sliders that time. <laughs> yeah. She was saying like how she, you know, what I'm saying she treat her nine to five as her as her hustle. You know, what I'm saying her career as her, you know, what I'm saying that's her nine to five. She just treat her job like you say as the money she put into her her business, and then once that blossoming and get the you know popping off, she fucked the job. So she just using it in a way like you say you gotta use it to you know what I'm saying put that back in your and what you do. But in your and your in, in, from where you coming from. You looking at it like it's taken away from your creative, you know what I'm saying, process from you getting out there and mingling and meeting people. Yeah, but and part of it and, and then part of it was and look, let's be honest. If I had a job that was paying me a hundred thousand dollars a week, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, I sure. might have to stick around because it's, yeah. it's it's paying for what I'm doing. But that's the point. I was making what? Twelve an hour with commission or something like yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah. So you got hope you got sell your ass off for that commission. Or look, an artist pays anywhere between two hundred and two thousand dollars for a music video. Yeah. If my check is five hundred dollars, <laughs> that is one music video. Yeah. If I if I if I decide not to eat. <laughs> so, what am I working for you for? You know what I'm saying? Like, so for me, that's part of it. Like, I wasn't you wasn't giving me enough. Yeah. To justify yeah, for sure. putting off time for my career yeah. to work for you, yeah. because none of my money can go back into it. <laughs> I might want to eat this week, man. <laughs> yeah, music video eating, like nigga, I gotta choose this shit hard. <laughs> yeah, that's true though, bro. Like, and then like I said, man, I had bullshit jobs that expect you to come in here and bust your ass, and then you looking at the check and it ain't really going with how hard you working during that week. You're like, damn, I did. I didn't slay like a motherfucker and bust my ass. Tired. And this check, I just pay my bills now. I got a couple of dollars. That's it. Can't do nothing. Can't do nothing to build your own empire. Hell yeah, for sure, man. How man? How important is bars to you, dog? Like, like, like a lot of times with music, man, bars don't don't matter. Being a good rapper don't matter. It's all about the sound. If if people gonna rock with the beat, if people gonna rock with the hook, like, or mo some people say people over rap and like, you know, what I'm saying, ain't trying to hear that shit. You know, what I'm saying, you trying to have a good time. So how important is bars for you? You know, it's like. You know, when you ask me that question, I think about a, you know, like I said, shout out to John Connor and ABM. I think about a conversation I was having with him. Mm -hmm. We was talking about different listening ears and whatnot because John Connor got bars. That man is crazy. Like, that man is a rapper, rapper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, you know, we was having a conversation about, you know what I'm saying, the other kind of music and whatnot. And, 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 and what's the... You know what I'm saying, and what's the and what's the goal of certain songs and whatnot? And yeah. you know, one of the things that you know I described, and one of the things that you know we understood is like, 
music, you kind of have to. It just kind of. I feel like there's different ears that I have for, sure. for different. So that's why you listen to different songs at different times. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you yeah. listen to the same song every emotion that you're experiencing. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So sometimes I, when I listen to songs, yeah, the bars are going to be extremely important because. I'm trying to listen to somebody talk to me right now. What's yeah. going on? Hell yeah. Or sure. or I'm trying to laugh. You yeah. ain't saying nothing funny. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I'm vibing. Like that melody is crazy. Yeah. That flow pattern crazy. Hell like, yeah. So I mean bars are important. Yeah. They are. You know, have bars. If you want more fans, have bars. If you want yeah. less fans, don't have bars. That's yeah. the reality. Right? You need bars. <laughs> Seriously, because you can make the same songs that have no bars and make the same song and have bars. Yeah. And if you make the same song with bars, you're not gonna lose your other fans. Yeah. You're just gonna gain more. So yeah. so so have bars. But at the end of the day, you know, their importance is still weighed against a bunch of other elements that needs to be valued in music. It's funny when you say what type of ears you got. My brother, older brother, always say I had the nigga ears. Like, the only thing I want to hear is the same type of shit. Like, because he, he like, you got to listen to everything, bro. And, like, to be a, a good artist, you do got to, like, tap into different things other than just rap and shit. Like, you say you tapped into reggae early on. Like, like, this is like I think about Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg listen to everything. And that's why he, like, to me, the biggest rapper ever. Not the best, but the biggest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know uh, 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 Snoop from a little kid to an old old woman. Like you know, who Snoop Dogg is like for real. It's it's arguable. Yeah, yeah I, I see it. What you what you arguing? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm saying this. I, it makes sense. Mm. I I I would need more time <laughs> yeah. to really think it for me and to and to de make to make my opinion yeah. that's yours. I would yeah. need to really think about if Snoop Dogg is the biggest name, but but that's the point in my yeah. head right now yeah. I'm having a hard time contesting yeah it's hard to think of somebody else moment. cause like even so, Jay Z and, and, uh, and Snoop Jay Z is the better rapper you feel me as far as like I mean songs. do everybody know I mean is Snoop Dogg name bigger than Jay Z to me yes you think so I think more people if you took a poll more people would know who Snoop Dogg is other than Jay Z honestly that's what I believe hmm <laughs> Like, like I take it even farther. Snoop Dogg might be top five names, like being known in anything. What about in life? Like, oh man. <laughs> I believe it's, like Michael Jackson, Snoop Dogg, like those like people who everybody like gonna know. No matter Michael Jackson been dead for years, and my my son know Michael Jackson. He been he just was born in twenty sixteen. So yeah, yeah. everybody, everybody would know who Michael. Like Jackson me and my cousin, I think sure. we was on some drunk shit. We was talking about like top five just people in in life, like God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you want to take God away, you got Michael Jackson and Snoop is definitely the, is two of the top five. Michael Jordan. <sighs> yeah, you got. I mean, Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan might be one. Kids, yeah, you gotta put Jordan up there. But, yeah. yeah, but this is and this is. <laughs> This is a crazy thought process because I'm I'm really having to step outside of what I just knew. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm thinking people then I'm like, damn, am I the only one who really knew that nigga? Like, everybody fuck with him like I do. Oh, so, you got, all right, Drake. Drake is in there now. Is no, he's not, bro. You don't think no, so? No. If we talk about <laughs> if we said Snoop Dogg, okay, Michael Jackson, and yeah, Michael okay. Jackson, Drake yeah, is not. But Snoop the, Dogg is definitely like the he, people might be thinking he's talking about somebody else, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but Snoop Dogg, Elvis. yeah, Snoop Dogg is definitely the is in there, bro. Might be top three most known niggas ever in life. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm like, okay, so it's my bound, yeah. my industry boundaries are getting expanded the more we name the names because that's well, something that's just rappers. Now I'm talking about just life. You didn't period. mention Hitler now, so it's yeah. like it's just life. Period, though. Who you know? Who? Yeah, yep. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let me tell me, let me talk globally. You mentioned yeah. Hitler. You you like, so I don't know if MLK that known in China. Yeah. Obama, Obama one. Yeah, he Obama, up there. Obama, Obama, Obama for sure. You gotta say Martin Luther King just because. That's what you taught every. In, every well, do they still do Black History Month in school? Cause shit, my right. son will never talk about it. But you got it. Martin Luther King got be in it, cause that's the go-to on Man, Black History Month. Plus those those marches were the first that's televised, so that's the first yeah. time people outside the country started to see. Exactly. It. Yeah, you know Hitler. Everybody know who fuck Hitler oh, is. Sure. Michael Jackson, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Jordan. 
this list is crazy. <laughs> if you got, if you remove like the headline or the title of the list and just put the names up, you have no idea what you're trying to categorize. Man, bro. for real, man. For real. How we, we, we got. <laughs> What's going on, what man? I must be all over this mic, dog. Oh, pause. Yeah, that was gay. Yeah, super pause. Like yeah, but no, Snoop Dogg to me, like. He's not the best rapper. Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg is in my personal top five. Like, I don't go off top five just of what they should be in. You know what I'm saying? Of course, cause of course, everybody going to have the same top five. Pop, Big, J, Nas, M. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I just go off the top five of your personal, you know what I'm saying, feelings and whatever, dog. You, mm -hmm. got, you got one of those that just outside of that box, bro? So, like, here's the thing. It's hard for me to give a top five. Okay. And, and, and we and we back on music. Yeah, right? we back on music. <laughs> we ain't talking about Hitler top no five more, people dog. all time. Like, hey. Co is Cosby top five people all time? Nah. No, no, kids don't know who the fuck Cosby is. They, they just know he a raver now and shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> reputation is definitely yeah. a little squandered. No, as far as music, bro, like my top five ain't the traditional top five. So like my top five, mine ain't either. Number one is I I can't. It's hard for me to give an all time top five. Yeah, I can probably give an all time top five. I guess in my life. Yeah, you know, but that's probably about it. Yeah, but for sure. As far as my top, and even then, it's probably gonna be more current because it's yeah, I'm just living in the moment. You know, it's like my top five probably gonna be. Okay, so I talked about Russell. Okay, he's firstly I can't give it in order. Yeah, so I'm just giving you. Five. No, 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 it's order. not in order. Russell's on the list though. I gotta sure. go peep this dude as soon as I leave here though. Um, and uh, cause like I said, he influenced my entire career choice and all, you okay. know. So, and it was really just off the grind he had and everything. So, yeah. So, uh, he on the list. Okay. Uh, man. Yeah, obviously J Cole's on the list. Yeah, J Cole definitely my guy, man. Yeah, so that, that, that's an easy one because he dropped the KOD album, which is right now like my favorite album of all the time. Shit, this last one he put out was was dope. The last album was dope though. My favorite one is the Four Zero Drive. Um, right now I got a lot of I got heavy respect for Lil Baby right now. So, bro, it took me a while, but Lil Baby is hard. Yeah, like, the dude is crazy. For you real, can, he, he, like he ain't got on songs with, with with like Drake and J Cole, and you can say he had the better verse. In a way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I he, see I see how somebody can enjoy the verse more. Yeah. I I I enjoy elements of the verse more. It's hard for me to weigh any of the verses against each other. For sure. So I I, don't, I, I can't describe either of them as better. Yeah. But you know. He but he held, he, you can he say he held, held his own. a different way. Yeah. He held he held his own like he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. He did what he was supposed to do. Hell yeah yeah. Shout out to little baby. He definitely dope. So yeah. So he on the list. That's three. Um. I I might be willing to put. I might be willing to put Kevin Gates on the list. I'm surprised uh, you said that. I really might be willing to put willing to put Kevin Gates on the on the list. Yeah, then I fuck with Kevin Gates. Um, I probably put Juice World on there, and, okay. that, and that'll probably be it. Yeah, I like what's name too. Man. I didn't tap into him ever since we went to Denver two years ago. Money bag yo. That's my <laughs> I fuck with my bag, yo, dog, heavy, dog. Yeah, money bag yo had a, and, he, and he been having having a good year. Yeah, see, I'm I'm, so. I'm be so stuck. In the in the past, I don't be like giving new people a chance. Like that's why when I finally listen to Little Baby, like damn, this dude kind of nice. Like for real, for real. And then when Wayne was talking about, him, cause Wayne never talk about other rappers. Damn man, all the time you mentioned, you just mentioned Wayne. I ain't have room. For now Wayne is my top, my personal top five. That's my Jeez, top five. Man, Mine's is, that. See, this is why this is hard. Yeah, it's hard because it's gonna change. If they go ask you this on your, the next interview you go to, it's gonna it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be different. different. Oh yeah, let me make that clear right now. Yeah. Every list I do like, right now <laughs> is probably gonna be different. Yeah, mine's pretty much the same, bro. Like my top five is, is Pop, is, is DMX, is, is Snoop Dogg, is Lil Wayne, and then it's Nas. That was my favorite. Uh, that was my favorite rappers right there. Like Lil Wayne is when I really started like listening to rap for real. Like I heard rap, but I wasn't listening to rap until like the Cash Money, like Juvie and mm -hmm. Wayne and stuff. I'm like, damn, these little these, these little dudes is hard. Like then I'm like, let me go back and hit everything as far as BG and Turk and all that stuff. Like I, I was listening. I was a Cash Money fiend, bro. Mm -hmm. So as far as music, bro, what's some? We talk about everything you like, the passion you got for music, bro. What's some shit that you hate that you gotta deal with when doing music, like? Politics. Okay, yeah, that's why a lot of people say that. Say hate that. politics. Yeah, hate it so much. Mm -hmm. But it's look. Let me just say, not all politics. Firstly, I don't. I want to make something clear. I don't think that all politics is bad or unethical politics. Yeah, some politics is good for everybody involved. For sure, and it's it is cool, and everybody is consenting to the politics. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Yeah, so, and but 
but that's not a lot of it. A lot of it is is that you kind of you know one of the things about music is is just just as far as as far as the the environment around you and music, you know, things can get a little political, no matter no matter no matter what you rap about or anything. Like it's just it just the environment can get political. Yeah. So you just have to constantly think about everything you do as far as as far as the kind of people you want to surround yourself with yeah. um and then the kind of people you want in your life you know what i'm saying yeah, so for sure, for sure. um that's the only thing you know you just have to think about motivations and things like that so yeah. that's probably the thing i least like about you know um this this entire thing but i think that comes with i think that comes with doing anything entrepreneurial yeah, any way, yeah. for real. you know what yeah. i'm saying like if you want to be a ceo of a, i mean if you want to own a business or if you want to, you know, build a nonprofit, or no matter if you're if you're trying to lead anything, yeah. you're gonna deal with a ridiculous amount of politics because Hell you're yeah. the lead. Hell yeah! So Hell yeah. you know that's that's the reality of of that kind of work. That's that's the work side, you know. Oh, now last thing I'm gonna ask you as far as the music side, dog. You 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 started doing music early. You say you was in the studio as early as eight years old. Yes, yeah, sir. What's some shit that you 24? Yeah. 24 year old uh, camera tell your younger self as far as like what you, you should do different in your starting music focus on getting better yeah I don't think I had I think when I was a kid I was too obsessed with the sensational side of rap yeah I wanted to be I, I, I it was just more about making sure everybody saw me yeah you know what I'm saying I I dropped a song yeah okay now everybody got to hear it. Yeah. Everybody got to see my face on the, on the cover. <laughs> everybody got to know I made it. Yeah, for sure. All that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like my mindset I think was different. Yeah. Now, you know, you know, I really love making music. So now I feel like I was cheating myself back then. Now I focus on making better music. I just want to be better every yeah. day. I focus on just being better. So I would have told myself back then that, you know, you're cheating yourself not focusing on making sure your content is better because you're going to like your own music better. You're going to be more confident and all. Yeah, for so, sure. So that's what I would have told myself. Yeah. You know? Now, we always end off on some funny junk, man. I give you, we do a top three. I give you a category. You give me your top three, man. Give me your top three childhood celebrity crushes. Uh, top three, top, man. I'm. This is hard because I, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't into celebrities like that, like that when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Man. So one, um, one dude but, named the cartoon. Shit. But, but you know what? But, but I got you though. I got you. Though. <laughs> if I, if I had top three celebrity crushes, yeah. I, um, as a child, I'm thinking. I'm when I was a kid. I'm thinking. So look, I, I used to watch like. Okay, so now I was a kid. <laughs> Listen, listen. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, you know, Demi Lovato would hop across the screen sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and I used to be like, okay, yeah, yeah I like her. Yeah, for sure. I, she cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, and you're back in those Disney days. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then, um, number two would probably be the other side on Disney. You know. You know, Troy over at high school used to take the girl that I used to like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Her name Vanessa. You know what I'm saying? Duh, what show was this? This is High School Musical. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Some people might. <laughs> my man, my man's trying to basketball and seeing yeah. his way in her life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But at the time, I was like, man, you tripping. <laughs> um, so Gabriella was the character. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, and then a, a third one. I mean that. That might not be doable, man. I don't think I have a third one. You got a third I, one, though? I, I think that really might have just been. That was your top yeah, two. I just, when I was a kid, I was a Disney Channel fan. So yeah. See, yeah, 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 you, 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 we was we was with, with, on Nickelodeon, dog. Like, we was fuck with Disney. We was on Nickelodeon hard, dog. Rug rats and shit. The, the only one that, okay, Lola Bunny got me. That was about it. <laughs> <laughs> she did well, fucking space jam with that bitch watching her and shit, dog. Lola Bunny got me, Man, but that wasn't. Fucking, duh. I knew I didn't have a chance with her. Yeah. Wasn't real. <laughs> duh. Well, she not even real. <laughs> no, 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 was it a cartoon chick you like, dog? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a cartoon chick, dog. Maybe Patty Mayonnaise on Dub, man. Why the fuck around watching Dub? Dub, Dub, funny. Right. My fucking Patty Mayonnaise was black and that much. She was. <laughs> Yeah. No, all right, give me your uh give me your top three food. Oh me? Oh pizza. Yeah. Oh pizza uh, all day. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Classic 
pepperoni pizza. Yeah. Chicken. For sure. Huh. A third one. No, you <laughs> your shit might be down too. Like. <laughs> um, and, 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 um, and yeah, I was just going to say a, a good beef patty for sure. Yeah. Good, good Jamaican beef patty. Hell yeah, for sure. Give me your top, give me your top three movies. Um, damn, that's fucking hard. Top three movies. Yep. Um, I would say oh, your top three when you high movies and shit because you only got the movies you can watch. No, no, no. High. Okay, look, look, <laughs> look. Friday on my list for sure. I for love sure. Friday and I've seen the movie so many times. It's Hell always yeah. funny. Classic. It, it never don't make me laugh. Hell yeah. And so I, I feel like a lot of people are tripping when they don't put Friday on the list. Hell yeah. So just a masterful art piece. Yeah, that's a book. So that's Friday on the list. And then, um, uh, I probably put I probably put Menace of Society on the list. Yeah, that's a good list so far. Shit, you yeah, Menace, that's that's a shit, boy. I, I like Menace of Society a lot, and, and I still I, that's that's still a movie. I I can watch that movie however many times yeah, for yeah. sure. That's one of those ones I can watch a lot. Um, and then there was a movie called I don't remember when it came out, but there was a movie called Her. Yeah. Where the dude fell in love with his computer. Yeah. Any of y'all seen that? No, I never repeat that. So, 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 her, that movie, I think, was just done perfectly, in yeah. my opinion. My opinion. And you say you don't know when it came out? I don't remember. It was like 20... Oh, was it? 13 or 14. Or, yeah. It was not that old. It's not that old. I'm about to pee. But that movie, but that movie, ever since I first watched it, I was like, this thing is crazy good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, the plot is kind of corny. Okay, yeah. you fall in love with a computer. Okay, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. 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 But no, but for real, it's actually real good. The plot makes sense. The plot is good. They they made, in my mind, they made it make sense to you. Yeah. So by the end, you can attach emotion to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, what year was it? 2013? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit, man, we, we was talking about... Uh, What's the last movie made you cry, dog? Damn, last movie that made me cry. <laughs> yeah, random shit, dog. Random as hell. I don't know, man. I, damn, the last movie that made me cry. I don't. Huh? I don't think I cry in niggas, movies that much. You know. You know what? Oh, you know what? I know exactly what it was. But you know, I don't know if it, I don't know if this counts because it wasn't a movie. It was a documentary series. But oh, wait, wait. I, it was. What is the name of it? It was. It was. It was the documentary series on. Um. On the. Um. Um, on the uh the Civic Park Five. Mm. Okay. It, you you guys remember what I'm talking about? It came Central out on Park, Netflix. Central, Central, Central Park, Park Five. Oh, yeah, bro, bro, bro. Me and my yeah, wife it came out like it came on, out. Yeah, that's yeah, the first it, time, dog. Like me and my wife cried our ass off, dog. <laughs> like, I, like I cried like somebody died. I bro. cried when I watched that. For bro, sure. especially my man's who got uh who got convicted as a dog. Yeah, and he he, he was already wasn't a hundred. He you know he was a little he was slower than than the rest of them, bro. So he didn't know what was going on, and he's just going out there to support his homie who got to go to the police station. He know like if he don't go, he gonna get in trouble. He, they had a scene where he was in the where he was in the cell. And he was in the uh uh he was in the uh you know when they lock you up in detention and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. bro. Yeah, he was he was in, he he was in that boy going crazy. Yeah, like, the acting in that thing was crazy. Dog, no, like, that that dude he played. In the, a great role in that motherfucker, dog. Like me and my wife was in that bitch. Look, I'm like, I'm trying not to cry. Did he I know. something for that? Yeah, he won. I think he, he he definitely won something, man. We was crying our ass off. Like that's the I cried hard, bro. It was like it was fucked up. He was 16 dealing with this, like he in jail for no reason. Right. So you're like, damn, you you locked up, you know, what I'm saying in, in, in solitary confinement, whatever. He they ain't had no. Remember, he was in no no air. He's that boy playing. He, my man, the one of the guards was bringing him like little magazines just to take his mind off of you know what was going on. But that then his um his sister had passed away and shit while he was in jail. The solitary confinement scene is the one I was thinking about too. Yeah, yeah. that solitary confinement scene they had him bro, in. Bro, that was crazy. That shit, that just, yeah, that just, you, you you never seen a documentary, bro? You gotta watch that shit. Uh, it, it, it's hard. I was, I was I was just gonna say and I, I was to watch it, yeah. and I was just gonna say I knew a lot of people at the time when it came out and said I'm not watching this one I'm no. good because I didn't see and much. his part was the worst like all of all of them was messed up but his was the worst because like I said he got tried as an adult so everybody else was in, 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 you know saying they was minors so you know they they kind of got out early too he was the last one to get out and his situation was just fucked up bro because he he honestly just went down there to show love to his homie and fucked around and got. Prison time, bro, with grown men. You 16. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, yeah. the whole situation was sad. No, it was fucked up, bro. He had I the saddest part of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It was really no, so I mean, I, if I see that movie terrible. right now, I'm like, duh, that's because you. I, I'll be so invested in like movies and shows that I'll be like, dog, just imagine if that was me. Like, and, and it's like people in jail right now, prison right now for no reason. You know what I'm saying? It's in the same situation he was in. And they ain't, and they ain't gonna see this, the day of light, bro. Like, for real. That was fucked up. I had never watched that shit again. Yeah, I was the same way with the uh, Khalif Browder. Uh, fucked up. You, y'all watch that one? No. Gotta watch that, boy. Yeah, he, yeah. Another one. Same situation. Yeah. Same Rock, yeah, the, the, the worst prison. He got out. He got out and then that's when he, it's on, it's online yeah. and that's when he committed suicide yeah, stuff. I'm like, yeah. watch the, what's the name? What's the name of it? Khalif Brother. The Khalif Brother. Uh, Jay Z was a part oh, of that God. production, right? Yeah, six, yeah, sixteen. So he went to jail because uh, somebody said he just stole a book bag or something. It was his book bag, so he didn't actually do it. He stayed in Rikers Island for damn near three years on technicalities. Nigga never never seen a, a judge. Never seen a judge or nothing. He just in there with with animals though, because like I ain't gonna lie. Mm-hmm. It's going down in Rikers Island. Yeah. He's 16. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do with that. And then that's when they're talking about, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. at 16. How long ago did that happen? I didn't know that Shit, story. this, like, this came out, like, six years ago, didn't it? Yeah, Why didn't I, I know that story? Yeah. I mean, then it was talking about, like, it happened, but it was talking about, like, him being in solitary confinement at 16, locked up. It was, he, your, your brain's still developing part. at 16. You so he, savage shit. And then just real quick, as a side note, though, that's why I don't watch, uh, and this is way aside, though, that's why I don't watch People's Court, right? Because People's Court, like, this is funny, <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny but uh, the lady, who was a celebrity judge, yeah. was one of the fucking judges. Oh, yeah, from damn. His, from his, uh, from his, from his case. Yeah, yeah, no, y'all yeah, definitely, real? y'all definitely should watch that shit. And see though. how she got a job and everything is cute and everything. Yeah, that's and that crazy. Life is fucked up. Yeah, he, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, yeah Khalif Brother, like uh, doc, I think it's like a three or four part um docu docu series, whatever. Yeah, it's dope though. You gotta check that out, dog. Yeah. Then we got no, all you saying this you, know? <laughs> you just put me, you just put me hip to something I should have knew about. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a dope, a dope, a dope uh, a docu um documentary, girl. Like, and it's fucked up. Another one that make you kind of <laughs> share a tear. Like, fuck, bro. I'm for sure sharing one or two on that. Man. One, for sure. Well, speaking of, wait, wait, last top three, man. Top three moments in life, man. We got to get it back with some positive <laughs> shit. <laughs> Give me your top three moments in life, dog. My top three moments in life. Yeah. You know what? Uh, so, look. The thing is, look, I'm 24. Yeah. So, you Still, know. Yeah. yeah. So, in my mind, it's like I haven't even experienced. Like, in my mind, I don't register. I haven't registered moments like that because in my mind, I haven't even experienced what, For sure. you know what I'm saying, the peak of life yet. You know, right now, I value, the, I value you know, the people I love. So, my, my top moments are probably being related to meeting in the time I experience with the people sure. I love. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the, the moments that I have with my mom is going to be on the list. I can't name one because I, yeah. you know, I just appreciate them yeah. all. You know what I'm saying? Man, the moment. This is a deep brother right here at 24. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. That's you know what's what what's 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 or, or the moment, or the moments, or the moments that I have with Rena, you know, my yeah. girl, you know what I'm saying? That's, oh, that's yeah. on the list or, or, you know what I'm saying? And, the, and, uh, and then, and then lastly, just what I do, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Anything in relation to, you know, it, being able to experience what I do is all the, it's just all a part of it, so for I can't sure. even name a specific. No, moment. that's that's dope. That's dope what you just did. I'm growing right now. Hell yeah, so for sure, for sure. Ask Man. me that in like uh, ten years. One more, one more time, <laughs> I might be able to add and give you one. Yeah, yeah. Well, shit. We have, by that time we both I have a big ass podcast making money. You are gonna be a big ass rapper, so we all be good. Come in the bitch and reflect on uh and crowd that shit for uh, out, man. <laughs> we crowd for that shit like damn we made it bro. <laughs> All right, man. We always I know you gotta go. You got some other shit to do, bro. End it off on a uh, drunk moment or a high moment, dog, or both. Uh, okay. So I don't drink. So fortunately, I don't really got no drunk moments. I yeah. know them drunk moments be crazy. Yeah, man. no, it do. It be terrible. Drink, <laughs> crazy. Man. Real terrible, dog. But outside of that, look. So I've been smoking weed. For not really that long, for, for a long time, but not really for like I started smoking weed when I was like eighteen, you know yeah. what I'm saying, like late. But you, but I smoke every day, all day. Like I smoke like <laughs> cigarettes, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. I would. The only reason I was smoking one now is because I'm that take too much of my attention away. Yeah. And I roll up again. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> but so but the thing is because of that, you know, a lot of people who do that encounter edibles and be like, shit, the edibles don't really do shit to me. Now look. They don't do shit to me for real. <laughs> to this day, they kind of still don't yeah. because, like, I promise you, like, I've tried uh, and I want to love. I never even wanted to be the type of nigga to say this because when, back before I used to eat edibles, when I heard other niggas say this, I used to talk shit about them. I used to be like, man, that nigga bullshit. Man. Yeah. Killing the right amount. That nigga probably gonna be. But but now I struggle to find edibles where 
where they affect me in any real way for real. Yeah. Other than maybe going to sleep, and I probably was smoking too much anyway. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, 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 but I, I feel like the edibles was involved in this night where <laughs> it was like a, it was an early night. Oh, yeah. I didn't know you smoking. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> you take that. I ain't passed the one I had. No, I, I don't smoke. Passed. I'm good. Okay. So. Niggas ain't selfish ass. <laughs> I was here, dog. You ever not pass a blood, dude? Someone <laughs> hand it to you, like, oh, damn. I didn't know he was on that. <laughs> but, uh, but so, it was one of, it was one of, it was one of the first, I don't want to say first few nights, but it was still the beginning of when I met Rena. Yeah. <clears throat> so we still kind of riding together in this, like, talking, we just getting to know each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, with your favorite fed, color you know? and shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, you told me. So I'm hitting the uh So we smoking, we hitting weed, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? We encounter some edibles, we eat some edibles, it's yeah. a long night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're in she got a Jeep, we're in her Jeep. Yeah. You know. Um we end up going to a Coney Island like late, late at night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We smash on some food. This is after I ate the edibles. And right <laughs> now I feel like I'm not feeling the edibles. But I do remember <laughs> I do remember about halfway into my plate <laughs> feeling a little uppity. I was some something then kicked in on me. So um but it was it wasn't like I was just tripping them, but I was like, Okay, so I'm feeling a little high. Okay, yeah, it's cool. You yeah. know, so that's what's up. It's the first time I'm getting like that up here. <laughs> so but I'm but I'm still smashing, right? Yeah. So I'm ate all my food, <laughs> right? And maybe it was more food than I should have ate. <laughs> yeah. So uh now I'm with Rena, you know what I'm saying? We go we go back to my crib. But we ain't going inside. We just chilling. We smoking in a car so like that. Yeah. We actually fall asleep yeah. in the car. So Man. we sleep as hell <laughs> in the car. I mean, she it is in the driver's seat, sleep as hell. <laughs> I'm in the passenger seat, sleep as hell. I think it's like 3 a.m. at this point. <laughs> I just woke up throwing up. I promise you, oh, all over her though. car. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't like. Oh, you in the car? Yeah. It's throwing. Oh, God all of us. I didn't have time to open the door, roll down the window, or nothing. Yeah. Because I woke up throwing up. Like yeah. I didn't, like I like my eyes is open. <laughs> out my eyes open and it's vomit God. coming out type shit. She's out there. And I don't ever like, you know what I'm saying? For those who got weak stomachs, it's my bad. Yeah. Look, man, I don't ever like projectile vomit or nothing like that. That's not man. something I ever do for yeah, real. Yeah, for sure. But this one night specifically. I was on that, so yeah. it wasn't even like I just stood up on my shirt. Yeah, you was oh, no. over. <laughs> the dashboard, no window. dashboard door. I mean, what's crazy is because I was frantic, I wasn't smart enough to just look one direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell me you shut your girl with it. With I, I, you didn't shut your girl up, did you? I know. I ain't, oh, ain't tired her with it. I ain't tired her. Eat that ah. But I was. <laughs> Okay, built a, a cube of throw up around this motherfucker. I wasn't smart enough to just look one direction, so I didn't hit. I didn't tag the side, the front, the, my lap, the dirt, and now here. I didn't tag it all. Hey, like what's going on? Now look, now this is the Duh. next problem. None of it woke her up. Duh. So now I got Duh. the responsibility of waking her up. And Duh. so. <laughs> So imagine Dang, she you've been was, you talking was to now imagine you've been talking to a girl for like two months. Yeah, so it's still kind you of just, fresh. You just threw up all over her car. <laughs> she is sound asleep. You was covered in vomit <laughs> right next to her. You just looking around in pure silence. She's snoring you. <laughs> Duh. How do I wake her up and tell her? What do I do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's probably the most wildest story I didn't have. Or I'm hey, you know, you know what would be funny though? Shit, like, like say what would be what would be funny if they wasn't like so tight or trying to build nothing, and he just had left, and she woke up and was wondering if it was her who threw oh, up. <laughs> I just left. <laughs> I just went inside like, the crib. Like, it was over. Like, Night like, over. Yeah, like, she did I do this? Did he like, do this? This a joke? Like. That's fucked up. No, I woke her up. I woke her up. <laughs> let her know. But we was a real up. grimy junk dog. That would have been messed up. Like the that. car was ruined for the rest of the time that we had the car, though. Did she, the rest of the time she had that whip, it was ruined. It was done. I'm about to say, man, did you clean it? Did your paint get clean? I tried I mean, both. Of course, you had to clean it. I tried both. Firstly, I, 
trying to clean up a car outside of vomit without all the resources you need to clean up vomit <laughs> at four hard. in the morning <laughs> is difficult. Yeah, it's dark as hell. Crickets. You ain't got shit to clean it with. <laughs> so, so that was that was out the gate. Damn, difficult. That's funny as hell. But then the second, but then the second thing. Uh, is even after you clean it all up, you know, cars got all these crevices and all yeah, this stuff. And this is a liquid. To. This is a liquid that hardens. Yeah. So it ain't like something fell somewhere. <laughs> so all the little areas that's damn near impossible it's to there. get to, it's there. So like it's like yeah. that was really the problem. So I tried to pay to get it clean, but that didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. And then it just it was just we ended you know, up just getting a different. It got just, micro got side pieces of hot dogs all over the place and just chili. We don't drive that car no more. <laughs> we don't drive that different car, man. Man, that man. wasn't that wasn't fixable. Oh bad man, I, oh bad. I threw up in my homeboy Jeep one time. And I told him to let the window down. I still threw up in the car. Let the window down, cuz. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, well, he ain't listening. Man, he did. He, he laid down and I still threw up in the car. Like, oh, hey, man, let the, let the window down. What you supposed to do? Man, <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, I fucked up, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, bro. I appreciate it. Heavy, man. It was man. funny, Thank man. You guys, good man. good stories, man. We almost cried a little bit. We talked about Snoop Dogg and Hitler and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get the people where they can find you as far as your social and your music. Yeah, man. So uh, if you didn't catch it, my name is Cameron Tyler. I'm on Instagram at Cameron Tyler Vid, Cameron Tyler V I D. Um, and then uh, you can just search me up on YouTube to find my YouTube channel to search Cameron Tyler, C A M U R O N T Y L E R, Spotify, Apple Music, all that. So uh, real easy to find me. Uh, I appreciate y'all having me on the show, for man, sure, real deeply, sure. man. It's a real honor to come here. Uh, sure, appreciate you coming through, bro. And. Uh, just uh, support the movement if you haven't joined the movement already because uh, I think there's going to be a lot to see. I got a lot more music coming, a lot of videos coming this summer, so yeah. I'm excited. What's some, uh, what's some, uh, some last many words you want to leave people with, dog? Some, some positive words. Don't do drugs. Well, you're doing drugs, but <laughs> what's, some, what's, some, <laughs> what's some positive words you want to leave people with, dog? Like, you well, know what I'm saying? Two of them, if you, if you smoke, hit your weed. Oh, yeah, Like, for I'm sure. going to do real quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then, secondly, chase your dreams. Um, I'm tired of people sitting on their ass not chasing their dreams. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I don't mean that in any insulting way because I was doing that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just thankful to to be inspired to just say fuck it and try my best to do something. And I just want everybody else to have that same mindset. Like get up, chase your dreams. Like because it's worth it. It's worth it. It's not about nothing but hard work for real. So if you mm -hmm. if you do the hard work, you can make it. It's not about luck. None of that. You know what I'm saying? If everyone tell you that you can't make it unless you lucky, that's bullshit. Yeah. Just work hard. For so sure. you know what I'm saying I just want people to try their best and chase their dreams, man. Yeah. So don't 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 think it's and it's never gonna feel like the right time. Oh you know yeah, what I'm saying? For sure. So don't don't, do if you waiting on the right time, I promise you it was yesterday. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah, some, that was some good shit right there, man. Hey my my shit, I'm gonna keep it simple, man. Don't sleep, eat coney and motherfucking do edibles. <laughs> Shout out to everybody, man. Man. Peace out. That's it.